Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements' in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. Amen. Romans. Hallelujah. It's a great verse in our Bible. And and then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians, but I wanted to I wanted to point this scripture out to you, verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe. Anybody ever known a Phoebe? I oh, yeah, there's one in our family. Phoebe. Uh, I commend to you Phoebe our sister, who is a servant of the church which is at Centria. The church at Centria, we don't have a, a Bible account of that church uh, other than references like this where it talks about one of the individuals who was there. History tells us that the first, this is church history, the first pastor of that church was Zacchaeus was Zacchaeus. The second pastor uh, was uh, Cornelius from Acts chapter 10, the leader of the Italian band. But there was a church at Centria, uh, and Phoebe was one of the deaconesses there. That's what the word servant means. And she was a deaconess of that particular church. And it says that you receive her in the Lord as is becoming to saints, and that you assist her in whatever business she has need of you in, for she has been a helper of many, and myself also. Uh, and again, that word "secourer" in the in the uh, uh, King James Bible is is defined again as helper. Twice it says there that she's a deaconess uh, in that same verse. Uh, two weeks from this morning, we're going to be. Uh, in our Sunday morning service, we're going to be commissioning deacons, executive deacons, and elders. The Bible calls those the officers of the church, the office. It says in Titus chapter 1, if any man desire the office of bishop, overseer, elder. And so we'll be commissioning elders. <clears throat> it says if they use the office of deacon well in 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, then they earn reward from the Lord, a great degree. Uh, and, and so we'll be commissioning. We'll also be commissioning all of our helps ministry staff. Those are the people that coordinate all of our helps ministry departments, almost or right at 100 different volunteer uh, arenas and areas that you can serve in uh, in this church. And so we'll be praying for, uh, we'll, be, we'll be introducing, we'll have them stand, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll do that right within the service. So I, I want you to, um, that's not the whole service, that's, that'll be just part of the service, but I want to encourage you to pray for those who are leaders in our church. If, if I look around and I see different people that represent different aspects uh, of ministry, whether that's, that's music, whether that's ushering, whether that's security, whether that's uh, nursing home ministry, whether that's jail ministry, with youth ministry, children's, all, all the different aspects of ministry, uh, they lead that particular department. And those are our leaders. Uh, deacons, to a great degree, to some degree, uh, are leaders. They're, they're officers in the church. Our elders are certainly leaders. Uh, your pastor uh, is certainly a leader. Uh, and our Bible says in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy, the second chapter, pray for your leaders and all who are in authority. Uh, no one takes authority to themselves. If they do, they're out of line with the Bible. No one assumes authority for themselves, or they're out of biblical order. No one takes authority. Hebrews 5 says, all authority is delegated. So when it says pray for those in authority, uh, you shouldn't always just think of the top office. Or, or the top individual, or the leader, because there are many leaders that all assist and help. And so I want to encourage you, over the next couple of weeks, as the Lord brings it to your mind, think about that. Pray for our church's leaders. We'll be commissioning and praying over 
uh, them coming up in two weeks. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 1 and 2, uh, it says here now concerning the collection. Now, um, I, I don't, I've been in church my whole life, and, and I remember back when they called them taking the collection. Uh, that, that's not vernacular that's used much anymore, but uh, it says now concerning the collection for the believers, as I've given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Now, the, Galatia was a region, much like we would call this the Cooley region, or the Seven Rivers region, or the Tri-State region. And Galatia was a region, and there were a variety of different churches there in Galatia. And we read that in the book of Galatians. <clears throat> Here, he addresses the church at Corinth. And, and isn't it interesting that he, he doesn't say, now, I gave instruction to the churches of Galatia, but I want you to do it completely differently here in Corinth. No, he didn't say that at all. What he said is, you do it the same way they do it. You do it the same way they do it. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. And he didn't tell any other church to do it any differently. He said, these are his instructions, that on the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. Now that means store something up in advance. That means make preparation before you arrive. Lay by him in store as God has prospered him so that there be no gatherings, or it's the same word, collections, when I arrive. Then when I arrive, whoever you approve by your letters, then will I bring your liberal and generous gift to Jerusalem, and if it's appropriate, uh, I'll go also, and they shall go with me. I want to point out just a couple of things <clears throat> in that second verse. On the first day of the week, that's a traditional day that Christians gather and assemble. wasn't the only day they gathered. Uh, they had church, we read in our Bibles in the book of Acts, they had church every day. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> Amen. They had a prayer meeting every day that was called the hour of prayer. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the ninth hour. And that was their prayer time, and they had it every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that, Pastor, because I have to work. <clears throat> that, 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 that may be the case, but uh, I'm just going to tell you, they took off work. For prayer. They didn't take off prayer for work. They took off work for prayer. Just, just, just point it out. All right, you are inspiring me. Come on, help us. Come on, come on. I'm coming, sister. <clears throat> Why is pastor the bad guy and the hard guy and controlling and dictatorial just for asking a simple question. Pastor, we can't come to church on Sunday because I have to go help my family member on Saturday and I can't get it all done so I got to come back. So you're going to miss church to help family. Why don't you miss work to help family? Come on, where's that hanky? Get... Why, not, why not take work off on Friday and go help family on Friday and Saturday and come back Saturday night? Why skip church and not skip work? Just wondering. You're hard. That was the response. You're just hard. I'm not hard. That's hard. I'm just asking a question. Why is it okay to skip God's house, God's people, God's altar, God's work, God's word? Why, why is it okay to skip that? Well, I'm helping. Go skip work to help them. You never think about that because you... It's all just a matter of who's first, what's most important, and what you wouldn't ever dare think about putting anything else in front of. That's what it's all about. All right, I'm going to clean the closet. <clears throat> 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 I 
Because I'll put him back there somewhere. And he becomes when it's convenient for me. Right now, it's more convenient to stay home and watch. Now, not for everybody. Some people have to, need to, and I'm glad that they can. But others, it's a convenience. Because when you can go to the home show, you can come to God's house. When you can come to, when you can go, well, that's, that's, that, that's my livelihood. You've got your whole life so messed up. God is your livelihood. And if you'd seek first his kingdom, you wouldn't have to work so hard. We got lunch plans, don't we? All right, you two guys, when I'm done, you sneak me out of here. Just get your, right out the side door. No, for my heart, I want to talk to you for a moment. If you're Christianity, I may not be talking to you. I, I may be talking to maybe one person that's watching, just like I did last week. Helped his life forever. He'll never live anymore like he's going to have a second chance and he can live any way he wants. He'll never have that deception and lie of a devil. He'll never have that false doctrine. I'm not critical of the person who wrote the Left Behind series. I own the whole series. It's like 30 books. The Christian world just forgot that they were fiction. That's what they forgot. And they started to develop their own personal set of beliefs and doctrine. And, 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 and they started embracing a fiction novel as truth. Just like they do with Christian music. And you sing it enough times and you start to actually believe what it says. And you think that's what God's will is and God's heart is. And it's not. There's only one book, only one, that reveals the eternal God who will never change. I don't know where the doctrine comes from that Jesus is just going to be so happy when I get there. He's just going to open his arms. I'm so glad you made it. I don't read that in the Bible. I read that I'm going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, every believer, and give an account for everything done in my body, good or bad. Where's that verse? I think I heard it, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. I mean, it may read differently in your Bible, I don't know. Or maybe it doesn't even in your Bible. But in my Bible, this is what 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's not the great white throne judgment. That's already settled if you're a Christian. But we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He will sit on the judgment seat. Why? Because our Bible says God the Father will judge no human. He has delegated that responsibility to God the Son. And God the Son will judge everyone. Everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. All right, let's move on from that. <clears throat> a little earlier in the service, I encourage you to get on your knees before our God. Get on your knees before your Lord. If Jesus is nothing but a story to you, you'll never do that. If he's not more than just a principle, if he's a code of conduct, if he's something that you believe in instead of someone, if he's not personal to you, you'll do things in church but when you're all by yourself and there's no one else around and you get down on your knees and you start talking, you'll think, what am I doing this for? This is sure silly. Because he's nothing more than a concept. The Lord Jesus Christ is more real than anyone else sitting in this room, than the person you're sitting next to, the person you sleep beside, the person you walk through life with, the person that you were raised by, 
The Lord Jesus Christ created everything that is, including the chair you're sitting on and the carpet that your feet are on and the TV or computer or your iPhone or whatever else device you're looking at right now. The Lord Jesus Christ always has been and always will be. And he was the one that, that, that created uh, and, and, and that envisioned a race of being called angels. Colossians 1 says he created all of them. And humans. And our Bible says he created us all. Created everything that is, and it's only his will that ultimately will be done. Given us all our own will, and woe to us if our will doesn't conform to his will. If it's just a set of rules and regulations, you'll end up nowhere else but where the Old Testament believers ended up, because that's all it was to them. It was a set of codes of conduct, 10 commandments, 630 some rules and regulations and, and rituals and traditions, and that's all it becomes. Christianity is a relationship, the relationship with the living Christ, the one who redeemed us, who, who actually did go to a wooden cross and was actually nailed there and, and, and speared through there and who actually had his body ripped open to shreds, filleted alive, who shed every drop of his blood and whose spirit left that body decimated as it was and descended to a place of eternal suffering and damnation and, and, and punishment and suffered there for three days and nights. I don't know why it was that long. But it was half a week, three days and three nights, and, and, and then up, up from the grave he arose. And it surprised those people close to him and next to him, and they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it, but they had walked with him. We, you and I, we don't walk with him like they did. We don't handle him like they did. Our whole walk with the Lord Christ Jesus is by faith. And, and we don't believe that because we had a feeling, because we saw a flash of light. We don't embrace that to, 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 our, to our dying moment. We don't cling to what we embrace and believe is true at the peril of our very lives by anything but faith. And faith comes because we believe what God's Word says that there is a loving God whose son came to this earth and lived a perfect life. And then that life was sacrificed. These aren't just Christmas stories and Easter stories. This actually happened and took place. And heaven is not some place that I can only imagine. I can read about it. And I can, I can see it. I can see what takes place there and what's going to come. He's given us a glimpse of that. Even, even after even after that thousand year reign of what will take place. He's given us a Bible to reveal himself to us. His nature, his character, his attributes, his unchangeableness, his all powerfulness. He's the only God that ever was and he's the only God that ever will be. And if I just go through life and say, I believe in God, and live my life and that doesn't have any impact on me or effect on me. If I can't bow on my knees all by myself, no one else around, every day in my prayer closet, in my secret place, then I have to search my own soul and search my own heart and search my own life to see how real the Lord Jesus Christ is to me. Or is he just an idea? Is he a concept? He's not an idea. He's not a concept. He's the Son of God. He's the Son of God. He's our Redeemer. He, he's, he's our Lord. He deserves our all and nothing less. He deserves everything and nothing less. He deserves our first and our best and nothing less and nothing less. Every single one of us ought to live in the light of an immeasurable gratitude for what he's done and, and not, a, not, a, not, a, not a moment, a second ever go by in life when we're not grateful. 
and thankful for what he did. And every one of us ought to live our lives in the light of the moment that we stand before him and give our account. The day of reckoning. Every one of us will face it and have it. And if that's really, truly real, it will govern every decision you make. If, 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 the, if you live in the light of that, and it's more than a concept, more than you just heard a teaching on, and, and, and you really live in the light of that day, it will change everything about you forever. It'll change the way you make your decisions. It'll change what you give. It'll change the way you sing and worship him. It'll change the way you serve him and, and, and the, the strength and effort and, and ability and, and blood, sweat, and tears that you're willing to put in with it. It'll keep you loving people. It'll, it'll, it'll armor you against ever being offended by anyone about anything. Because you understand it's not about them. It's not about you. It's not about your hurt feelings. It's not about what you think you should have gotten or received. It's about him and his kingdom and him and his kingdom alone. It's about glorifying him. It's about his will being done. And it's about the Lord Jesus Christ getting what he wants all the time, 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 and all the time. And if that means I don't get what I want, so be it. He's the Lord. That's what, that's what it means when he's real to you and when you walk with him. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.